Welcome back. All right, so uh, a career video that's been requested many times over over the years. I figured today, why not? It's the first uh, Saturday of hockey of the regular season, so we're going to talk about Ty Domi, uh, one of the most enforcing of enforcers that ever enforced. He was a number 27 pick by the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1988. He did not last long in the Toronto Maple Leafs organization the first time around. Just placed two games, had 42 penalty minutes, so they were memorable. Uh, and then June the 28th of that following summer, he is traded with Mark LaForest, a goaltender, in exchange for Greg Johnston. So the New York Rangers pick up Ty Domi, and the enforcers arrived in New York. Plays 28 games in 90-91, just the one goal, but 185 penalty minutes. Uh, Ty Domi was an interesting one, too, because as his career went along, it felt like he became more of a hockey player. Uh, in that he was used for basically the enforcing duties and he didn't play very often. 91-92 plays 42 games with the Rangers, 2 goals, 4 assists, 6 points, 246 penalty minutes. This might be one of my favorite stat lines I've ever seen. 4-2, 2-4-6, 2-4-6. Anyways, he plays 6 playoff games, 1 goal, 1 assist, 2 points, 32 penalty minutes. So the penalty minutes... Uh, they translate to the playoffs as well. 92-93, plays 12 games with the Rangers. Two goals, 95 penalty minutes in those 12 games. Uh, December 28th, he is then traded with Chris King in exchange for Eddie Olchick. So, he goes to the Winnipeg Jets. And this was a much-discussed trade at the time. The Winnipeg Jets needed to get tougher. So, they trade Eddie Olchick, who was a goal scorer, to the New York Rangers in exchange for Chris King, who can punch, and Ty Domi, who can also punch. But they could also take a regular shift. And it felt like in Winnipeg, he got more of a chance to show that. 49 games as a Jet after the trade in 92-93. Three goals, 10 assists, 13 points. 249 penalty minutes. His combined penalty minutes between New York and Winnipeg put him third overall in the NHL that year. Six games in the playoffs, one goal, 23 penalty minutes. 93-94, again, he shows in Winnipeg he can take a regular shift. 81 games, 8 goals, 11 assists, 19 points, 347 penalty minutes. That's first. Um, this is where I might want to mention, we don't even see guys get to 200 penalty minutes anymore. So, it really is a bygone era, and I don't know that these penalty minute totals are ever going to be touched by anybody who's going to play in the NHL or is playing in the NHL. So, 94-95, a lockout shortened season. 31 games with the Jets, 4 goals, 4 assists, 8 points, and 128 penalty minutes. And then on April 7th, a trade that I swear was made with Don Cherry in mind, because Don Cherry had complained for years that Ty Domi was not a Toronto Maple Leaf, that he had been traded back in 18, 1990, 1990 to the Rangers. So April 7th, the Jets trade him to Toronto with a 1995 for a 1995 third, which was used to draft Brad Isbister. And Mike Eastwood, two guys I probably will not be doing career videos for, but who knows. If I'm alive long enough, you never know. I might be like, I need to do an Isbister video. I don't think that happens. But anyways, uh, after the trade to Toronto, he plays nine games, just the one assist, 31 penalty minutes. So his combined penalty minutes total between Winnipeg and Toronto puts him eighth overall in the NHL. He's slipping. So 95-96, his penalty minutes total goes back up. 72 games with the Leafs, 7 goals, 6 assists, 13 points, 297 penalty minutes. Yeah, that's good for third in the league. Six games in the playoffs, two assists, four points. Yeah, yeah, third. Right, 297 penalty minutes was third in the National Hockey League. Almost 300. Again, we don't even see guys hit, hit 200 anymore. So October 14th of the 95-96 season... Uh, he sucker punched Alf Samuelson, and he got an eight-game suspension for that sucker punch on Samuelson. Now, Alf Samuelson was not a popular figure in hockey, and so for me, I was torn between I I don't like seeing a guy get sucker punched. I don't, you know, I mean, he got knocked out, but it was Alf Samuelson who, of course, as a Boston fan, I I wasn't really a fan of Alf Samuelson. And reportedly, when he dropped Samuelson, the Vancouver Canucks watching from the Pacific Coliseum um, all stood up and cheered. So, uh, at any rate, it was it was something that got him suspended for eight games, and it was seen as a good trade-off. That was, that was how it was seen at the time. So, 96-97, he plays 80 games with the, with the Maple Leafs. 11 goals, 17 assists, 28 points. So, again, he can play a regular shift. 
275 penalty minutes. That was fifth overall. 97, 98, plays 80 games. His points totals drop. Doesn't matter. It's not really his role. Four goals, 10 assists, 14 points. 365 penalty minutes, which is second overall in the NHL. 98, 99, his penalty minutes totals drop off a lot, actually. 72 games, 8 goals, 14 assists, 22 points. 198 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, 14 games, 2 assists, 24 penalty minutes. So again, in the playoffs... Penalty minutes not quite at the same rate as during the regular season, but still, uh, he's he's capable of getting some penalties. 99-2000, 70 games with the Leafs, 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points. He has 198 penalty minutes again. This time, though, that's good for third in the league. So this is right around where I guess the penalty minutes totals start dropping, right? Your enforcers start uh, exiting the NHL, and we're going to get out of the enforcers era soon enough. So, 12 playoff games that year, one assist and 20 penalty minutes. 2000-2001, 82 games, 13 goals, which at that point is a career high, 7 assists, 20 points. in the play, or 214 penalty minutes, which is 7th overall, and then in the playoffs, 8 games, 1 assist, 20 penalty minutes. 2001-2002, 74 games, 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. 157 penalty minutes. Oh, you want me to go back to this incident? All right. March the 29th of 2001 is where the incident with the uh, Flyers, where the incident in the Flyers penalty box takes place. <clears throat> so you've got a fan who gets the water bottle treatment from Domi. Another fan decides, I'm going to climb the glass because it's not like Domi can beat the crap out of me. So the glass breaks and, and so Domi beats the crap out of him. So maybe the guy lost a bet there. But at any rate, um, he, he's fined $1,000 for that incident. Money well spent. And said he was he was glad to see fans, you know, becoming more part of the game afterwards. So, I mean, you're not going to suspend him because of that, right? You, you just, you can't suspend him. And then the reason he only plays 74 games in 2001-2002 is because of a suspension that takes place as a result of the playoffs. So, during this run here... Uh, May 3rd of 2001, so what causes him to only play eight games is an elbow to the head on Scott Niedermeyer. He suspended the rest of the playoffs and the first eight games of the following season. This is where the argument of, well, you need to have an enforcer to stop these things. But when an enforcer does these things, who enforces the enforcer? Because the enforcer likes fighting. So one of those things that I've always thought, you know, I don't remember it quite that way. Usually the enforcers were the ones that might be out there throwing an elbow and this kind of thing. And in this case, you know, potentially injuring Scott Niedermeyer. So it's one of those things. But 2001, 2002, he plays 74 games. So after the suspension's done, he plays all 74 games. Nine goals, 10 assists, 19 points, 157 penalty minutes. In the playoffs, 19 games, one goal, three assists, four points, 61 penalty minutes. So that's a pretty hefty penalty minute total for playoffs. 2002-2003 actually has his best offensive season this late in his career. 79 games, 15 goals, 14 assists, 29 points. He could take a regular shift. 171 penalty minutes, which is ninth overall in the playoffs. Seven games, one goal, and 13 penalty minutes. What's interesting too, though, is in 2002, he actually was Nashville property for about 24 hours. He was traded to Nashville. They wanted to try to sign him. He ends up signing as a free agent with the Leafs that following summer anyways. So he ends up with 11 seasons as a Leaf, but he's, he's Nashville property for, again, about, about 24 hours in there. So that takes place. Anyways, 2003-2004, the last year before the salary cap, 80 games, 7 goals, 13 assists, 20 points, 208 penalty minutes. That's nine, sixth overall. Um, so he's top 10 in penalty minutes a lot during his career. 13 games in the playoffs, 2 goals, 2 assists, 4 points, 41 penalty minutes. 2005-2006, and what would be his final season in the National Hockey League, 77 games, 5 goals, 11 assists, 16 points, 109 penalty minutes. He would retire the following September, uh, just as one of those sort of, hey, that's, that's interesting. Wendell Clark was the best man at his wedding. Um, so that's a wedding where nothing, nothing untoward occurred because you've got Ty Domi as the groom and Wendell Clark is the best man. So there was a lot of thank you, yes, sir, of course, sir, of course not, sir, going on at that one. So 1,020 penalty minutes, or 1,020 penalty minutes. I'm just, it's right on the brain because it's Domi. 1,020 games for Domi, 104 goals, 141 assists, 245 points. So in that final season, he plays his 1,000th game, 
gets his 100th goal. Uh, 3,515 penalty minutes. That's third all-time for the career. Uh, 98 games in the playoffs, 7 goals, 12 assists, 19 points, 238 games. Uh, 333 fights apparently is an all-time record. And I'll, I'll take their word for it that the all-time record is Domi with 333 fights. Uh, it would not surprise me if he's the all-time leader in fights. It also would not surprise me if we have not been tracking this since the beginning of the National Hockey League. So, at any rate, Domi had a, a nice long career. Uh, played longer than a lot of the other uh, enforcer types from that era. And again, he could play a regular shift. So when Max was coming up and I kept saying, well, you know, Max may not be as tough as his dad, but he's a much better scorer. I always felt like people were, were kind of underrating the fact that I know Domi wasn't out there to score and he played third line, fourth line minutes. But 104 goals is 104 goals. So at any rate... There you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.